We talk, we talk, I talk about props, I talked a little bit about them yesterday at the, uh, uh, at the round table, you know, whether it be a prop in a, uh, a burn building or a forcible entry prop or anything else. It's harder for the instructor, I believe, to use a prop because they're not real. The prop doesn't know it's supposed to be a door. It don't know, okay? It's, it, this is a prop, it's a piece of steel with a very, I mean, if you had a door like this, would you want to open and close the door like this every day? No, it's different. So it's a challenge for the instructor not to teach just how to force this door. The instructor has to teach, because you're never gonna see this in front of a burning tenement or apartment on fire or up on a high rise, but you'll never see a door like this. So the challenge is. Once in your career maybe? Well, that was different. We can talk about that one. That's different. But the challenge for the instructor, a good instructor who really, know, who really knows how to force doors in burning buildings, okay, is to teach it so that not just to force this, to force doors. And I always tell the new guys, I'm not teaching you to force this. We can force this. Sometimes these are worse than forcing a door. I'm not teaching you to force this prop. And I'm not even going to talk about this prop. I'm going to teach you how to force doors for the rest of your life. And I say that to the new guys. That's why I do what I do. And whoever made this was pretty smart because he put this up here. And I usually write that on a door. When I work at the, I work down in Westchester County at night a lot of times. And I'll always take our prop. We have a prop similar to this. And I'll always take a, a, a magic marker. And I'll write gap set force. Always do things in a series of three. A fireman can't remember four. He can't do it. <laughs> he, he won't do it. It's a multiple. It's a multiple choice test. So it's three things. You know, the, the Halligan has three parts to it. Forcible entry has three steps. Even conventional forcible entry has three different segments to it. So like, it's it's a three-step process. So I, whoever made this, uh, it's good. I like I like those th I like those three words. So we'll go force the door. So I'm going to just point out how I would force a real door in a. Uh, you know, like, a, like a, a, tenement, a tenement door, inward swinging door. This gentleman's gonna work with me. Got a knob here. So a lot of times that's all that's locked. So you're gonna ask me, if I had a look at this, and I even drew in the suggestion when you make props, when you make props, make them look like a door. How would I know where the lock is? I had to draw it on there. What I would do is I would take, this guy's obviously a good welder, I would take my arc welder, and I would weld like an inch and a quarter bead right around there so you know that's a lock. Because you gotta come up with a landmark of, you don't wanna put the, you don't wanna drive the fork in where the lock is. You wanna remember a six inch rule. Six inches above, six inches below. It's an important point. Now if you're teaching guys how to force doors for the rest of their lives, not just to force this, they're not gonna know where the lock is. They're gonna know this, there's a lock here, but if there's nothing here, how would they know? So I drew it in. So we wanna be six inches above, six inches below. We actually would simulate two locks. I'm gonna go between the two. Very simple stuff, okay? So, uh, so let's work. So when I, so I got a regular eight pound ax, a halligan, and they were kinda of nested together. I'm gonna get rid of the ax, I don't need it. If he's not here, step on it because I know where it is. He didn't show up yet. He's going to be late to the game. He's running up with the can and the hook. I don't know where he is. I know it's right there. So, but he's right here. He may get there ahead of me. I don't know about that. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to try the doors. It was swinging, steel door, lock is here. I'm going to go below it. So how do we measure six inches? It's all about dimensions. These halligans are all about the same. They're three inches across, and they're six inches, give or take long. So if I know this fork and halligan is three inches, and I figure three inches for a lock, and I want to be six inches, three inches, three inches, even a fireman can figure out that's six inches. Very simple stuff. But you gotta point this out, because it's not a, really a strength test, it's like bull. So I'm gonna work right in here, I drew it on here. I even drew where the Halligan's gonna go. So, 
those are the simple things we do. So we try the door. Okay, it's locked. I always give the door a shot. Now, when I hit this thing, it's not going to do anything because it's a solid piece of steel. But I would give it a shot right on the lock. It loosens up a regular door. All that really did right now is hurt my hand, but that's okay. A regular door, it would dent it. And then I would give it another shot. Probably right where I want to, I want to go right here. Loosened, I actually did loosen it a little bit, it moved. Down here, you can see it move. Up here, it's moving. So I'm figuring, I could go look, but I'm figuring the lock's right there. So when you hit a regular door, it crushes a little bit. This one didn't do nothing but chip the paint. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my, I'm gonna start gapping this door. I don't even need him yet. So I might get this door by myself. So I'm gonna see if I can get the ads in here. Sometimes you can push it in with your foot a little bit. Yeah, I got it in there. If it was really tight, I might need a tap. But a lot of times I don't even want this guy here yet. He gets in my way, especially in the smoke. Sometimes I could take the, I could take the fork of my howler. I can stick it right where I want to go, slam it in there, and you catch that? Remember that. Did you hear the, whatever the wood is in here, crunch? I got a nice gap in here now. Just remember that. You don't need him yet. A lot of times you work by yourself. So now I can stick my finger in there. You got to teach this stuff. You got to explain it. You got, you got to actually verbalize it. Now I'm going to try my ads again. I'm going to crush it. I'll get what I can out of it. But then I see guys do this sometimes and they annoy me because you're wasting my time as an officer. You can do this all day long. Learn how to set the tool. We just gapped it so far. I know I'm going along, but believe me, this is important with a prop. We did that one. Now we're going to set the tool. This is the skill. Bevel to the door. Shoulder like this. I'm looking right in here. A lot of guys are taught wrong because they're a prop. Oh, let's do it this way. Oh, that's great. What happens at the end of a hallway when the door is right here? And I was always taught, hey, man, stand where you want. Here, stand over here. It's easier. Yeah? Well, the first time you get up on the hallway and the wall is here, you don't know what to do. There's always room here. Stand here. Get your shoulder up against it. Get your hip. And now I'm going to need you. Now I go back to that right in there. And I take, I put the bevel to the door and I push it away. All right. Hit when I tell you. All right. Hit. Hit. So now the tool's set. My arch lines right up with the inside stop of the door. My fork's wrapped around. Of course, I couldn't see this at a regular job. Now I'm gonna slam this in, see if I can pop it. So now a lot of times you gotta chalk it with something, but this thing has a memory, and I go, I'm still, I got it set, now I gotta force the door. So this is where we come into something, and I named a lot of this stuff because it didn't have names 20 years ago. I call it the second maneuver. It's where we take the ads and go all the way in and we grab the inside of the door frame. What it does is gives me more leverage, but mostly more range of motion. So I go all the way in, and sometimes you've got to tap it, but hey, I shouldn't give it a tap. Give it, give it a tap, let's set that in all the way. Hit. So now I got another six inches of bite. This is where I might need his muscle, but maybe not. Maybe yes. And always remember, control the door. And that's it. Get your air packed, you know, get, you know, whatever your procedure is. This is what we probably would get on air if we needed it. Go and make our search and search right behind the door. And a lot of times we'll chop the door open for our own protection. And sometimes we'll close the door. That's it. Thank you, man. That's it.